What's up everyone and welcome to Driver's Therapy. Also, welcome to my garage. For this video, I was gonna like drive somewhere and have like this really cool backdrop, but let me tell you, there's a lot of wind and that's just a lot of work. I'm just, this is just so much easier. I don't know, I love garage videos. But we're gonna be talking about the NSX. I've owned it for four years. I feel like I'm throwing a gang sign. Um, and that's a long time for me because I've owned something like a little over 50 cars in my lifetime. And I just enjoy different cars. It's given me different experiences, different impressions, and really um, has, has made me a curated or cultured car enthusiast. So we're gonna be talking about what my plans are for the car and, uh, and what direction I'm going with it. So I'm gonna be honest with you because I kind of want to make that always my trademark. I want to be like unapologetically honest. So I love the NSX, but a big part of that love is the support in the community. Like um, all the businesses, all the individuals, and the community has just been phenomenal. Like again, I've owned like 50 something cars, and, uh, and I can honestly say that I, I haven't had another experience like that. And I knew that um, when I bought the car because people told me about it. And uh, even going to NS Expo was just a great experience. So owning the car, like having that support group as we're gonna call it, is, is just a big deal with that. So that's one of those things that I wanna just kinda get, get out there right away that I love the car, but I also love what's part of it and that's the community. Now, <sighs> If you guys know, I sold my Supra, um, but it was because I had it for about six years and I was at this um, fork in the road where I either go all out or leave it the way it is. And if I was gonna leave it the way it is, then um, it was just gonna be too boring. It was a, a twin turbo automatic, but it was in like pristine condition. And, um, and I sold it for a nice amount. Um, but looking back, I'm not a person for regrets, but here recently one of my buddies had his uh, single turbo automatic swapped over to a two T56 transmission and uh, everything cost him, like he did some extra stuff, but everything cost him like 15 grand. And if I would have done with that Supra, did, if I would have done that to my Supra, I think I would have kept it for another like four or five years um, because it would have been like a new car, you know, going from automatic to manual. Um, but it's okay, I was done with it and I sold it and I was happy about it. And let me tell you, the GTR is probably one of the reasons why I'm sitting here and making this video in the first place because I love that car. So the thing about me is like, I like to keep cars OEM um, because here recently I've found out that if you want something from a car, uh, as you get older, you should kind of buy a car that has that. Like, I know a lot of people get mad at me because you know they're into modifying cars, which is great, but um, I feel that as certain cars out there, like you know, like a lot of people will buy, you know, like a 488 or a GT2 RS, and you know it's good to go, and uh, very little needs to be done, and I kind of like that experience. And the way I got introduced to that is. You can't see it, but by the GT4, I mean like, I mean everything from the carbon ceramic brakes um, to, to the race suspension, to the aerodynamics, to the engine, I mean it's done. I don't have to do anything to it. Um, the thing about the NSX is that I think in its era it was done as well. Like I've been finding out that the NSX is like a wet towel and when you wring it out, you get so much from it. Now don't get me wrong, like this is a beautiful car. I love the way it looks. I love the way it drives. And I know that uh, to get that kind of excitement, you really have to push it in a stock platform. But again, I've had this car now for four years and I've thought about, you know, going full modification, you know, modifying the whole car. And, uh, and personally, like, you know, I've got a full project, the S800 that I'm dealing with and that I love. I'm having the time of my life with that. I really, really, really enjoying that rebuild, the 1968 S800. But I'm at the point where do I leave it stock? Do I modify it? And I'll talk about what I mean by modifying. Or do I sell it 
and buy an NC1. And, um, and I've thought about all three options. I've thought about keeping it the way it is and just, you know, enjoying it. And, but knowing me, I'm like, I'm always like, oh, you know, it's kind of like The Bachelor. It's like, you know, like there's only so many slots and so much funds, you know, somebody's gotta go or somebody's gotta stay. But I love this car and I, I can't see myself getting away from the NSX community either. That's why the NC1 is up there too. Now, as far as modifying, I guess I could use what I learned from the Supra. Again, I would, I would have done that if I, if I would have thought that more thoroughly and known that that option was there and at the price. And the reason why is because there's a shop in Utah that's not far from here that picks up your car, drops it off, and the ease and the convenience of that would have been great. Now, I could go with the supercharger. I could um, go with the supercharger and uh, and see what that does. Uh, now this is a high mileage NSX. Well, in the world of high mileage NSX, this isn't, but this has 139,000 miles or 140. And, um, and let me tell you, it was taken care of beautifully, maintenance wise. Um, but where I'm thinking is like, if I add the supercharger, you know, at a 130 or 140,000 miles, is that being done? Well, as a master tech, I should be able to answer that, but I feel like these engines are so stout that I really think it could take it, you know? It could really take it. Now, I feel like I would wanna do that route, but I wouldn't wanna do any of the work myself because we know science's speed um, offers the product and they might even uh, offer, of course, if you pay them, to put it on. Um, the only thing is, and this is just being completely honest, is they're a great shop. Um, I'm just not sure, you know, if, if we would align with, you know, I'd wanna make some videos, I'd wanna be engaged. And if that wasn't the case, then I probably would try to do it myself. And again, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate, so I'm not sure if I'd wanna take that on. Um, but for the cost of the supercharger and science of speed and everything, um, it would make it a whole new car a whole new experience and um, and I'd be down to try that to be honest with you but in the same time that's about 20 grand if I sold this and then of course the 20 grand that I would buy plus the additional the NC1 I mean an NC1 versus a supercharged NSX driving experience I feel like personal preference look I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm like superficial, but I love the NC, I love the NA, but I just, I just love the way that the NC1 looks. I mean, it's just a newer car and I'm older. I just, I just, I like newer cars. That's just it. Um, and, but at the same time, I like older, uh, older cars. Uh, so one of the things I thought about this is that the price to modify the NSX is a little high. Like if you want the supercharger kit installed with the ECU and the tune and every the supporting mods, I think like 20 grand, you know. And and to be honest with you, like owning a GT4, I know I say that a lot, but let me tell you, if that guy Daniel Mack or whatever his name is, who asked everybody, what do you drive on TikTok? If the car he chose was a GT4 and he's asked everyone what they drive and seen a bunch of cars, like the GT4 is literally one of the best cars you could buy. I mean, there's just no question about it. Like, would it be redundant? I mean, I don't, even with a supercharger, I don't think it could even touch the GT4 um, just because it's just, you know, they're just two different cars, generations apart, time-wise and everything, technology-wise. And not only that, like the GTR, like I just, you know, like if you put a downpipe, you know, 30 horsepower. <laughs> you know, if you do a few different bolt-ons, 40 horsepower, 50 horsepower, you know, and it's like a thousand bucks or something like that. And that's the good thing about force induction is you just have so much more um, room to play with if you want to have fun as a tuner, as a modif, you know, as someone who likes to modify cars. So that's where I'm at. I really don't know yet. Um, I'm open to your guys' suggestions, um, but at this point, I'm really thinking about doing something about going one direction or the other. Um, again, I think the NC one would be amazing because it looks great. Um, I think the you know, putting a supercharger might be cool, but that's a lot of money uh, for what, 75 horsepower, 100 horsepower, I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know how much power more, but 
um, or leaving it alone and just leaving it alone. So we'll see. Here in the future, we're probably gonna get a bigger place because we're starting to pick up on YouTube. Uh, you know, we're getting older, we're progressing through our external careers outside of YouTube. And, um, and we're probably gonna get a bigger place where a slot really won't matter I and mean, you could just sit there, but I don't want a ton of cars. Who knows, maybe I do. But anyways, that's what's going on and I'm so happy because this is driver's therapy, but this is also car therapy because I'm like sitting here talking to you guys about how I feel about my car, about the options that I have, and really open to your suggestions and seeing what you guys think. All right guys, thanks for watching, thank you for tuning in, you take care, and we'll see you soon.